Hello and welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to access and use the Raspberry Pi's GPIO ports. At the end of this tutorial you'll be able to make a simple LED blink on and off. It's worth noticing that my Pi is running the Raspbian distro on a 16 gig SD card. It is connected to an old composite display and is powered off a 5 volt 850 milliamp Kindle charger. May I make it clear that your Raspberry Pi will be needed to be connected to the internet either by a Wi-Fi dongle or its built-in Ethernet. So, what are the Pi's GPIO ports? Well, the Pi has 26 pins on the top right-hand corner of the board. These are the GPIO ports. GPIO stands for General Purpose Input Output. This simply means that the pins have not been assigned to do anything specific. What can they be used for? The Pi's GPIO ports can be used for all sorts of things. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to blink a simple LED. However, this is not what you are limited to. You could use the Pi and its GPIO ports to control a robot, for example, or to monitor the use of your heating. The only thing limiting you is your imagination. So how many things can I control with the pins? There are 26 pins, however you cannot use all of them. Of the pins, only 8 of them are proper GPIOs. Another 9 of them have special functions that I'll explain in a later tutorial. 6 of them you must not connect to. If you do, you most likely will fry the Pi's processor as these pins are reserved for internal functions. Any damage done to your Pi is your own fault and in nearly all cases will be unrepairable. Stuff that you will need. A breadboard. Whilst not essential, these are a great simple way of prototyping quickly and solder freely. The holes in the middle of the breadboard are connected horizontally. The holes down the side are connected vertically. For more information on breadboards, I strongly recommend googling them. You will of course need an LED. You will also need two male to female GPIO jumper wires. This is because all of the Pi's GPIO ports are male, so these have to be female to male. You will need a resistor appropriate for your LED. A resistor basically limits the amount of current that goes through your circuit. The Raspberry Pi works on 3.3 volt logic, meaning that if you wire up a circuit uh, it, without a resistor, it will run 3.3 volts through your circuit. If your LED requires 1.7 volts, and that's the maximum safe voltage that it needs, and you send 3.3 volts through it, so you'll blow your LED. So that is why a resistor is used. A resistor um, is colour coded, not sure you can see it, uh, and they are measured in ohms and kilo ohms. An LED needs a current lim limiting resistor to protect it from burning out. Without a resistor, an LED will likely only work for a short time before failing and needing to be replaced. Knowing a resistor is required is one thing, but it's also important to pick the right resistor for the job. Too high a value and the LED will be extremely dim or fail to light at all. Too low a value and it will burn out. To calculate the resistor value required, you'll need to know the forward current of your LED. This is the maximum current the LED can draw before being damaged and is measured in milliamps, MA. You also need to know the forward voltage of the LED. This latter value, measured in volts, should be 3.3 volts or lower, any higher, and the LED will require an external power supply, as the Raspberry Pi cannot power it. The easiest way to work out how large a resistor is required is with the, is with the formula R equals V minus F divided by I, where R is resistance in ohms, V is the voltage applied to the LED, F is the forward voltage of the LED, and I is the maximum forward current of the LED in amps, with a thousand milliamps to the, to the amp. Please note that current is measured in milliamps, and, vo and forward voltage is measured in volts, and they are completely different things. Taking a typical LED with a forward current of 25 milliamps, and a forward voltage of 1.7 volts, and powering it using 3.3 volts supplied by the Pi's GPIO port, you can calculate the resistor needed as 3.3 minus 1.7 divided by 0.025 
equals 64. Thus, a resistor of 64 ohms or higher will protect the LED. These figures rarely come out to match the common resistor values as sold, so when you're choosing a resistor, always round up to ensure the LED is protected. The nearest commonly available value is 68 ohms, which will adequ adequately protect the LED. If you don't know the forward voltage and the forward current of your LEDs, for example if the LEDs did not come with documentation or were salvaged from scrap electronics, err on the side of caution and fit a reasonably large resistor. If the LED is too dim, you can revise downwards, but it's impossible to repair an LED that has been blown. So, my LEDs didn't come with any documentation, so I found that 100 ohms protects them reasonably. Now, on to how we're going to make the LED blink. We will be using uh, Python and the Raspberry Pi rpi.gpio library. Um, some basic Python knowledge will be required if you, to program them. You can program the GPIOs in a number of different languages, but um, Python is just the recommended one for beginners. Here's how to download the library. So now, if you haven't done so already, boot up your Pi and log in and start up a desktop with Start X. And we need now need to start LX Terminal. So uh, the first command that you're going to need to do is sudo apt get install. This is just telling the Raspberry Pi that you want to be super user, meaning that you have administrative privileges and that you want to install a new package. Python, this bit's important, and then a hyphen rpi.gpio and press enter. And probably it will come up with quite a lot of text for you. However, for me, because I've already installed the Raspberry Pi.gpio module, it just tells me that um, it's already at the, the, at the newest version that I don't need to update it or anything. So, if you're ever prompted, just press Y and then enter again. However, this didn't work for me the first time, and what fixed it for me was the command sudo apt get install just like before Python hyphen dev D E V press enter and again it will just tell me that I've already got Python dev installed however for you it might be different and uh, display lots of information so once that's done you have in successfully installed the module tell me if when you're installing the module there's any errors uh, just put it in the comments below or Tell me, email me at the Raspberry Pi guy at gmail.com. So close this. Now we're going to be using Python 2.6. Not Python 2, uh, 3, not Python 3, just 2.6. So to start it, go into programming, idle. If you missed any of the, uh, the stuff that I just put into the command line, uh, there will be all of the commands that I use will be in the comment will be in the description below, so don't worry. So once this is started up, this is the Python shell. Click on File and New Window. I've already programmed it, so I don't need to have a new window. And this is the stuff that you need to put in. So basically, I'll just walk you through the program. At the top here, it says import rpi.gpio as GPIO. That's just telling you to import the module. Make sure you spell rpi.gpio as I've written it uh, because that's important. And there's another one there, import time, so our Raspberry Pi understands what 0 0.6 seconds is or one second. Now this is the next most important bit. This is to set up pin 14 as an output. So gpio.setmode brackets open gpio.bcm bracket closed um, make sure when copying this or pasting this you make sure that all of the capital letters in here are as they are in your program now this is just a simple while true loop it means basically do it forever and this will just make our LED flash on and off so 
this is how you actually make pin 14 be set to high. So gpio.output brackets open 14 comma gpio dot high in caps brackets closed time dot sleep um, brackets open brackets closed one second and then the next one is gpio dot output 14 gpio low that just sets high sets the pin to true and low sets the pin to false so once you've copied and pasted or typed this out make sure you save it and don't bother trying to run it because it probably won't work because you don't have um, GPIO access is normally used as uh, you need to be the super user and Python isn't super user so once once it's saved I'll just save mine as gpio.test.py make sure when you're saving it that you you add .py onto the end so once that's done Close, close the window. We won't be needing that again as long as there's no, there's no errors. Now we will wire up our circuit using the breadboard, LED, and the two male-to-female jumper wires that I explained earlier. 